Hello, I'm Scott Amy, Senior Director for Worldwide Technical Training at Microsoft. And I'd like to welcome you to Microsoft's official certification exam preparation course. We're so thrilled that you've chosen to pursue a Microsoft certification. This course is going to prepare you to take the exam by providing an overview of the exam format, a refresher on the major objective domains covered by the exam, and by providing a number of useful resources and tips for studying. This course will be taught by one of our Microsoft certified technical trainers. And you'll also hear from our head psychometrician, who's responsible for designing the approach for creating our exams. We're invested in helping you to succeed with Microsoft and achieving our mission to empower every person and every organization to achieve more. Let's now take a look at what Microsoft certifications can offer you. Microsoft related jobs are consistently ranked among the top in demand technology roles and are continuing to grow in total market share. Earning a Microsoft certification can help you in a number of ways. It can help you demonstrate your knowledge in the latest cloud skills areas. It can help you contribute more effectively in your role. It can help you build industry recognized and transferable skills. It can help you advance and accelerate along your career path, and it can help you earn more in compensation. We're frequently evolving our certification training and our exams, updating our existing certifications, and launching new certifications to ensure when you say you're Microsoft certified, it means something. So thanks again for your interest and commitment to Microsoft. We hope you enjoy this official exam prep experience and find it a valuable resource in helping you prepare for the exam. So now it's time to hand you over to your Microsoft certified trainer who will lead you through the course. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to you. We are really honored to have you with us today. My name is Vikas Rajput. I am a Microsoft certified trainer and lead technical trainer for D100. D100 exam takes you to the credential of certified Azure data analyst and something that you probably are interested in. And we're really excited about that. This is an exam prep delivery for D100. As part of this delivery, we hope to help you prepare better by reintroducing and recapping some of the topics which we think can help you prepare for the exam itself. So when it comes to certifications, it's critical to understand why do we do it in first place. There could be two reasons for which you might be interested in taking certifications. One would be that the subject topic is quite new to you and you want to really go and you know pick up that. Or you might be already practicing on it and you just want to go and validate your understanding and prove your credentials on that. And for those two reasons, certifications are a good uh, mechanism to get started. Microsoft has a strong portfolio of certifications. And generally speaking, where we start is we start with the fundamentals. For example, we have Azure Data Fundamentals and you have Azure Fundamentals itself where you can prove your fundamental skills, you can prove that, that you have the basics of how the whole solution works and some services, key services which are available out there. Then we move on to the associate certifications where you would have certifications like admin, developer, Microsoft 365 certifications, and then at the same time, data analyst, DA100 course that we are talking about in this particular delivery. Beyond that, if you have got real specialized information and skill sets, that's where some of the expert certifications also comes in quite handy. For example, you have Azure DevOps Engineer Expert Certification and Azure Solution Architect Certification, which could be used to establish your expert credentials. For this particular program, for this particular delivery, we are focused on DA100, which is certified Azure data analyst. In this particular course, or the expectations that we have for every one of us is we have taken some basic fundamental understanding already, uh, be it through certification on fundamentals or through Microsoft trainings, be it self-paced or the deliveries that Microsoft has, for example, DA100 T00, which helps you prepare, prepare for this. Beyond that, the expectation is that you do have some work experience in that uh, specific stride like you have for Power BI and things like that. 
once you are done with all of that, this is where you are probably where you're ready to go and sit the exam. And maybe this, this exam prep delivery will help you in that as well. Now, please do be aware that you have some more additional resources like hands-on labs, Microsoft documentation, which will help you greatly. This particular program will also lead to a self-study guide, which will be shared with you. Once you have done all of this, you can definitely go and sit the exam, register yourself for that, and hopefully you will clear it as well. So let's start and focus on the agenda for the day. Right now, we are in introduction phase where we have different members and what we're going to talk about is something that we have introduced. After this, we will talk about exam overview and then we will delve into the real specific content that will be part of the objective domain review section in which we will cover five different objective domains. We will, we will cover that in more depth, more depth later on. And towards the end, we will do a quick recap to reestablish what all topics we talked about. And then we'll also call about some of the next steps which will help you in, in uh, going and preparing for the exam and sit the exam itself. So what are the objectives for this particular delivery? Well, few of the things that we do and want to achieve with this delivery, the first one will be that you are able to identify what will be covered in the exam itself, key topics, some of the key subject areas, things that you should be aware of or practice with. Um, we will also try to determine some of the key concepts and uh, prioritize list of things that you probably want to go and further study. It's not just us outlining key outcomes. There are certain times when you will hear about something and you will realize that you don't know enough about, and that will be your trigger to go and do more study on that. We will also talk about some of the potential exam formats that can come in the exam. Mind you, we are not giving away the questions itself. We are just talking about the formats in which the exam can be structured. And lastly, we will also outline some of the key learning resources which you can further utilize. Now, I would like to introduce Liberty Munson, who leads our psychometrics program to share how we design our exams at Microsoft including the types of questions you may see and how your score is determined. With that, over to you, Liberty. Thank you. Hello, I'm Liberty Munson, Microsoft Psychometrician. It's my job to ensure that whatever tool or process we use to evaluate skills is valid and reliable. So at the end of the day, when you say you're Microsoft certified, you truly have the skills you need to be successful. Today, I get to talk to you about our exams and help you get better prepared so that you can have a successful certification journey. So let's start with the basics. Most of our exams have between 40 and 60 questions. Because Microsoft is constantly updating our exams, the number of questions you see may vary if you have to take an exam multiple times. Some of the questions are worth more than one point. Keep in mind, there's no penalty for guessing, so you should answer all of the questions. You may also have to questions that cannot be skipped. Be sure to read the instructions carefully so you aren't surprised when you cannot return to a question. If you aren't sure about an answer, you can always mark your questions for review and return to them before leaving the section or the exam. How much time should you plan for your exam? For specialty and role-based, plan for 180 minutes. 150 of those minutes will be used to answer the questions or complete the exam. 30 minutes are for reading the instructions, providing comments, getting your score, and so on. For fundamentals exams, plan for 90 minutes, of which 60 minutes is for the exam and 30 minutes is for that miscellaneous stuff I just mentioned. Microsoft exams contain a wide variety of question types, from multiple choice to build list to drag and drop and hot area. It's not just multiple choice questions, which is so cool. We also just recently introduced some performance-based items on our role-based and specialty certifications. In addition, those certifications will have case studies that require you to integrate information across multiple sources in order to answer the question. So let's take a closer look at what the structure of an exam question looks like. All of our exam questions on our role-based and specialty exams follow a similar format. They start with information about the technical environment or a scenario, the problem that needs to be solved, the goals that need to be met, and a question statement. 
The question statement is typically, what should you do? Sometimes it is even, what should you do next or what should you do first? For fundamentals questions, the structure is simpler. Some questions are simply a goal statement and a question statement. Sometimes they're even simpler than that with just an instruction statement telling you to answer yes if the comment is true and no if it's not or to match a definition to a word. An instruction sentence is included when you have to take multiple steps to answer the question. This will indicate what needs to be done, how many answers to select, and if a, each selection is a complete or partial answer. Pay attention to the instruction step sentence because it tells you a lot about what is required to answer the question. Here is an example of what a role-based or specialty exam question looks like. As you can see, we have a technical environment, a business plan or problem, a goal statement, and then the question statement. In this case, because you just have to select one answer choice, you don't have an instruction statement. As I mentioned, the fundamentals exam questions are simpler in structure. In this case, you can see that it's just a goal statement and a question statement. I chose this particular example because it illustrates something else that can be unique about some of Microsoft certification questions, and that is that it only has three answer choices, and that is by design. So if you ever see one of these questions, the right answer is among one of those three answers. There's not a missing fourth choice. In 2018, Microsoft began adding labs to our certification exams with the goal of having at least one lab with at least 15 tasks so that candidates can show by doing rather than show by knowing. Let's take a closer look at what those labs look like. Here are three examples about the lab interface. Starting at the left, this shows the standard lab interface with the Azure portal on the left side of the screen and the tasks that need to be complete on the right. The test taker completes the tasks in the Azure portal and when complete submits the lab for scoring. Similarly, the second image shows what the interface looks like for labs that require multiple virtual machines to complete. In the last image, you will see an example of what the lab interface looks like in the situation where the lab is used as a resource. In this experience, the candidate must navigate and explore the lab in order to answer the questions. These questions cannot be answered unless the candidate knows how to find the information in the lab. This design is used for job roles where the tasks are too long to perform, are overly complicated, require expensive resources, or simply take too long to process. Now let's take a look at how scores work. At Microsoft, all of our certification exams have a cut score of 700. This is not equivalent to 70%, which is a common misperception. This is a scaled score where the raw cut score is translated to 700 and the remaining points possible are distributed across a range of 0 to 1000 through a mathematical conversion based on the raw cut score being equivalent to 700. Why do we do this? Imagine if you see a harder set of questions, should your cut score be the same as someone who got an easier set of questions? No, that's not fair. By scaling scores, we ensure that the difficulty of the questions you see is taken into account and in where your cut score is set. That's really the only fair approach. So how do we set the cut score? It's based on conversations with subject matter experts about the difficulty of the item pool in relation to the skills of the target audience. Some other tips that I'll leave you with as you prepare to take your exam. Remember, no points are deducted for wrong answers, so you should answer every question. Go with your gut and don't overthink it. If you're overthinking it, chances are you're making it too tricky. Our questions are not designed to trick candidates. They're designed to test your knowledge and skills. If you have an instant reaction to what the answer should be, that's probably the right answer. Some questions cannot be revisited. Make sure you read the instructions so you know when that's the case. Some questions are more worth more than one point. So at the end of the day, the best advice I can give you as you go through your exam is to answer every question. You will not be penalized for wrong answers. Questions can be worth more than one point. It's only in your best interest to do that. With that, I'll hand you back over to your trainer. That was awesome, Liberty. Thank you. Okay, let's get started with the objective domain review and get you ready for this exam. Let's go. So let's get started. 
and understand some of the objective domain review that we will have. At the very high level, we have divided this program into five different objective domains. From overall weightage in exam perspective, OD1, which is preparing the data, will cover about 20 to 25% of the weightage. OD2 is probably the biggest in terms of weightage when it comes to exam, and that is about 25 to 30%. And in this particular OD, we will talk about how do you model the data itself. OD3, which is visualizing the data, that will cover about 20 to 25 percent of the exam weightage. OD4, which is about analyzing the data, that is about 10 to 15 percent of the break. And then OD5 again, which is deploying and maintaining your deliverables in powerbi.com, that is about 10 to 15 percent when it comes to exam itself.